everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Art Corner. I am one of your co-hosts, Vicky Tai, and I'm Anusha Sayed. And welcome, guys. It's been a while—15 days, <laughs> a fortnight to be exact. Nice, nice use of the word fortnight. <laughs> I, I think I got it wrong though. Uh, fortnight is 14 <laughs> days, and I think it's been 15, or maybe I'm not sure. A fortnight I'm, and a day. <laughs> yeah, I'm an artist, not a mathematician. I think like exactly. all artists are bad at math, no? It's a stereotype, but I've found that it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, so what are we talking about today, Vicky? We are talking all about social media. Ooh. That fun. Yeah. That is kind of fun. Well, social media is a huge part of everybody's life, but especially if you are trying to be an artist online, it's very important that you know at least how to manage social media. Just the basics. Why? Because it is a very integral part <laughs> of sharing your artwork with the world. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, it's kind of like you can't be an artist these days without having some kind of kind some kind of presence on social media. Um. You mm -hmm. are going to be using it for. Um, becoming uh, becoming part of your online community, the artist community, for mm -hmm. networking, for sharing your art, and getting those clients, getting that money. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you don't have, like, uh, a, f a Facebook or a Tumblr or Twitter or LinkedIn, like, I don't know where you've been for the past 10 years, but you got to <laughs> get it together. You hear that? Get it together. <laughs> well, maybe we should back up for a second and talk about the social media platforms that we personally like to use, you know, that we're most familiar with, and kind of go from there. Okay. Um, I know that personally, we are both active on Twitter, because that's how I found you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what other platforms do you like to use? Um. So currently, I'm on, I'm most active on Twitter. Like, that's my number one. And then Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then every once in a while, I'll go back onto Tumblr. And Facebook, I don't even touch. So back in the, <laughs> back in the day, I did. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to know, like, what my artist's social media timeline is like, it was, like, uh, Neopets. And then yes. <laughs> DeviantArt. And then while I was on DeviantArt, everyone started, like, moving towards Tumblr. Because that was, like, mm -hmm. the next big thing. And then I shifted onto there. And then I was there for a good, like, four years, and then people started shifting to Twitter, and that's where I am now. And I'm hoping that something new shows up, because I'm so tired of this website, but <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, I, I would say that my experience on the internet regarding social media, like, pretty much mirrors yours as well. I think I had the same sort of, like, exodus from one website to another and oh my god I'm, when you mentioned DeviantArt it just like brought me back to this very specific time in my life <laughs> you know what I mean like the, the journals that we would post and uh, good times but um yeah I'm most active on Twitter and Instagram and between the two Twitter by far mm -hmm. Twitter is really great no, Twitter's, it. Twitter's like, good um but each of these platforms does have its pros and cons and like yes um yes. What, what should we start off with first probably twitter since um that that's the one we're twittering all about mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh my god thank you for laughing i was gonna <laughs> i was just gonna like <laughs> let that one die on the <laughs> but um yeah yeah so i guess we'll start off with the pros of twitter what, what do you got anisha okay so um twitter is very much a word like a text based um website as opposed to like mm -hmm. a photo based like instagram would be which honestly i this is an this is a con but i might as well say it it's uh it's not great for posting photos but it really is great for interacting with other people and yes. um yeah. it's very good for networking so like um twitter is how i found most of my it's how i've made all of my artist friends it's how i became friends with you and mm -hmm. it's also how I um, get in contact with like uh, with art directors and like studio people because like they're all on there and it's like it's a slightly more um, it's like having conversations with like everyone at once. Um, 
So when you say getting in contact with art director, art directors and like studio people, do you mean like on Twitter directly or like you send them emails? No. So in the sense where like they, you have the, because it's like very public and very open, like it's not like direct communication, but it's like, um, you kind of end up on each other's radars and okay. they might post something and you reply to them and then you kind of have like a back and forth and maybe you follow each other so that's kind of like or like maybe you post something like some piece of artwork or whatever and then by like retweets and whatever eventually they find it and that's how that connection happens gotcha okay yeah okay yeah i get where you're um, going because there's like a it's a very shareable culture on Twitter, which is very similar mm-hmm. to Tumblr, where, like, if you post something, then it gets shared wide. Because, um, like, if you po- like if someone retweets it, then someone on their feed sees it and retweets it. So, like, it's exponential. Whereas, exactly. like, on Instagram, yeah. like, when you post something, no one... It's really only your immediate circle who sees it because there's no, like, real sharing uh, that's going on. Right, right, unless you use hashtags. But we'll get into that mm-hmm. later in the right. episode. Yeah, I mean, like, everything that you've already said totally covers, like, the pros of Twitter. And I do want to, like, reiterate that it's very, very good with, like, connecting with other people and fans of your work as well. Mm-hmm. I know that um, for a long time I was really hesitant to join Twitter, actually, because I didn't really see the point of it. I thought it was just, like, this, uh, you know, app where people just – talked about random shit or just like so the way that I had envisioned it was like oh it's just people posting like Facebook style like um statuses like, yeah, all day right. long yeah so I I didn't join it for a while but when I did like I was immediately proven wrong because like that's not all that it is it really is a way to connect in a very immediate kind of sense mm-hmm. with other people and in a very casual way as well I, I would say oh yeah there's not a lot of like um there's not a lot of like gatekeeping I don't feel like and there's not an expected sense of formality necessarily I think like as long as you are nice you know and just like a kind person and open then you will just like do just fine Mm -hmm. on Twitter yeah 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 definitely um and then talking about the cons so one of the things is that like it's not image based at all like you can post up to four photos at a time but like it's going to be it's going to kind of crop up and even when you post your one photo it's going to crop up to fit the page so there have been so many times where i post something and it's like (laughs) oh and it just like crops onto like their chest or like their feet and it's like no that's that's not what i wanted just i wish go to their face yeah i wish there was a way to like before you post it to show how you want it to be cropped but no no (laughs) Yeah, so it's not really good for that. And um, what else? Um, um, so the audience that's on Twitter, um, it's a lot smaller than um Instagram or Facebook would be. It's because like mm. it doesn't have like a really broad appeal, so you don't have as many people on there. Um, but on the other hand, it's I also feel like it's like a more niche, but like a nicer community. I guess like I feel like whenever I post stuff on there. Um, mm-hmm. I get like a much nicer response because just because like the people who are following me are like or who are mutually you know following each other they're like mm-hmm. we're like like-minded people you know what I yeah mean? so yeah. like you have like more people who get what you're doing if yeah you know I mean. yeah I, I feel like because there's more like a personal aspect of it right like people don't just follow you for like just the art posts because like on twitter you talk a lot about you know what's going on in your life Mm -hmm. and sort of like what's going on in society at large and like pop culture moments people sort of get to know you as a person better rather than just seeing your work on its own so there's more of like a context to it and I think because of that people feel more comfortable approaching you in like a friendlier kind of way whereas with like Instagram it's just kind of like you leave a comment and that's the end of that right there's really no like discussion or conversation that sort of there's like a border that's like set up that like you can't yeah but you can't really cross most of the time but i guess that's also a con with twitter because like sometimes people can get over familiar and like they don't really Mm. know their boundaries but that's like there are just like a few bad eggs but for the most part i feel like people are people people are nice (laughs) people are yeah yeah i I would agree um like yeah for for the most part like what like 98 to 99 percent of the people are very very nice Mm -hmm. it's just that like what was it the 
the concept of like the vocal minority, right? Oh, yeah, like exactly. when people, if people have something to say and I don't know, they're like, they want to be really negative about it, then they're, they're going to do that. Like regardless of whatever social media platform mm-hmm. that they're on, that they are on. Yeah, yes, exactly. Okay. Um, okay. So that's Twitter. Um, mm-hmm. let's talk about Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The pros of Instagram. Um, oh god, I don't really use Instagram that much, but I do know that the hashtags seem to work very nicely. That's that's hmm. what I get from it. Like, I, I don't post stories or anything like that, so I don't have any experience with that. Right, right. Yeah, but what? Yeah, what are your yeah. pros? Okay, so I've I've never understood hashtags just because, mm-hmm. like, I personally don't go through the tags you know right right yeah um but i guess there are people out there who do so that's why it's important to hashtag and so that's like a really big part of the culture of instagram where like yeah. when you post something then you hashtag it and like you put in like words that are relevant to it and like people mm-hmm. who are going through that tag like let's say it's you're looking you hashtag it as art or illustration or dog or whatever is in your mm-hmm. thing and then people yeah. who are going through that tag will find your thing. And so that's kind of how posts are shared through Instagram. It's not like a direct sharing, but it's more like your work is tossed into a lake and like people fish for it. <laughs> I've never heard that analogy applied to Instagram before, but that, that I don't, I don't sounds about right, honestly. Not, but <laughs> no, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I guess what are, what are some pros? I I would say... Do you use Instagram stories? Uh, occasionally. Um, uh-huh. I might use it if I... Because um, I'm trying to keep my uh, Instagram, like, my feed looking really clean. Um, mm. So I only mm-hmm. want to put, like, my best work on there. So if I ever have, like, some sketches or, like, I want to just show my process, then I'll take photos of that for my stories. Um, mm-hmm. But apparently people are really into stories, and you should be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you? I, <laughs> I think I did it once and then I like forgot about it. It's mm-hmm. it's because I also don't really look at other people's stories just because I don't yep, use Instagram that much in general. Um, but like I have heard a lot of people like really interested in Instagram stories and how they'll like always watch stories from people that they follow. Mm-hmm. So like I know that there's a demand and an interest for it. Yeah. I just don't have a lot of personal experience with it. I think all. you could kind of use stories in a way that's similar to Twitter in that like you're sharing in a way you normally couldn't on Instagram. So like mm-hmm. if you wanted to make an announcement like, hey, my shop is opening at this time or like I'm gonna be here at this convention at blah 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 but you don't want to make like a post about it you can announce Mm. it through story yeah yeah no that's a good point I've definitely seen people do that and also using it as a way to like you said earlier share their process or to just like answer some commonly asked questions that Mm -hmm. people have for them yeah that sort of thing Mm -hmm. right 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 um we're going to discuss this a little bit more later on, like, gaining followers and stuff like that. But personally, I feel like it's a lot easier to do it on Instagram just because there's, like, a bigger um, – it is more mainstream. You have, like, a lot of people mm-hmm. who are on it. Um, and, like, people love following other people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. It, it definitely yeah. does seem to have a much larger audience mm-hmm. than Twitter. Yeah. So it's sort of like um, if you are – like comparing the two then like one has a more uh like a more personal touch to it and then the other one's just sort of more like hey everybody's here for the party mm-hmm. exactly exactly um can you think of any other cons um well i i, I have an iphone 5s so maybe this is just my problem but all the pictures are always really small so like i, I don't really like going on instagram because oh, like yeah. it's hard to see things and there's really no way to enlarge yeah posts. you can't you can't like really zoom in or anything yeah so like for for that reason i'm not the biggest fan of it because it's like i can't really see what people are posting i mm-hmm. mean like if it looks cool like i'll give it a like but like i, I don't really feel like i'm engaging with it in yeah. like the fullest kind of way but that's mm-hmm. like a personal preference i suppose yeah that's true yeah yeah because like on twitter mm-hmm. like um you are able when you click on the photo even though it's been cropped like in the preview like you can expand it and it fills up your whole screen like that's great yeah but yeah. on instagram really like you can't that, do yeah. that it's like constrained to the proportions and because it's like a vertical timeline if you have a horizontal photo 
then it's really hard to see. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, because it'll like crop it. Not not crop it. No, it will crop it actually. It'll crop it in a weird way, and mm-hmm. it'll just like it'll get those black bars, you know, when you post. Yeah. So it, like it just makes it look even smaller, and it's like okay, this mm-hmm, is, mm-hmm. is exactly. right. Okay. Um, the other thing would be that you can't really share. Um, and true, true. one issue which I feel like is much more common on Instagram is like reposting. Just because you can't share mm. it, like people are more likely to grab your artwork and post it as like you know for like their own page. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, you know, I don't really know what the etiquette is surrounding that. Like the first few times that it happened, I was like, this is kind of annoying. But like, it honestly just has happened so much at this mm-hmm. point that I'm like, do I? Is it even worth my time to like I worry really about this essentially? As like, what do you do? <laughs> For me, I don't mind too much as long as I'm being credited. Like, there is, like, a straight-up link to my page as well as, like, a tag. Mm-hmm. But, like, if you're just, like, credit to the artist, haha, then, like, <laughs> no, I'm I'm reporting you. Don't do that. Yeah, definitely. If you're going to repost, just please credit the person who made mm-hmm. the thing. Yes. And even Common better, <laughs> if you could ask before you repost, that would be even better. Because, like, some people don't like that. In an ideal world, yeah. Mm-hmm. People, people would always ask. Wouldn't that but. be nice? Because <laughs> like, if you're going that far, right, as mm-hmm. to repost, it's like, yeah. why not just also take the step to ask? Like, but yeah, yeah, there are like some good instances of like reposting because, like, especially when you're starting out, then it's like a good way to get that exposure because, like, a right, lot of right. these like reposting Instagrams, they have like thousands of followers, and mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I have like a post which got like two hundred notes on my thing. But it got like se- like seven thousand or whatever on their account, and it's of yeah, of course it's not nice that their post got more notes. But if they're you're, they're properly being linked, then like you have like people who find your work through that. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, that that's definitely true. Like it can help people out a lot for sure. And um, I don't really feel comfortable saying that it's either good or bad. You know, these sort of like repost accounts because like on one hand it's beneficial, right, in the way that we've mm-hmm. discussed. But on the other hand, I've heard of like, you know, they will just like repost other people's artwork and they'll amass a enormous following and then they'll like accept um, brand deals or, you know, like promotions and that sort of thing. And mm-hmm. it's all built upon other people's work. Yeah. And so like that I'm not as big of a fan of, but it's like it's not entirely good or bad, you know, so like I don't know what to say in terms of like it should happen or it shouldn't happen, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, I think that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, then Tumblr. So I have not really touched Tumblr in the past two years. I like, I'll go on like every couple of months and just mass post things just so like it keeps running. Um, mm-hmm. But for the most part, I feel like Tumblr is dead. Like some people have told me that it's not, but in my opinion, it feels like it's mm-hmm. dead. Ever since Yahoo bought them a couple of years ago, it's just been going downhill. Mm, mm-hmm. Your thoughts, Vicky? You feel I feel like I, um... you're not convinced. <laughs> I mean like I I post a little bit more regularly. I'd say probably like once a month or like once every couple of months on Tumblr. Mm-hmm. And like I have heard a lot of people saying like, yeah, like Tumblr is a dying platform and like nobody really uses it anymore. But like from what I've seen, it's just that like it's not necessarily that it's dying, but sort of that it's changing um it's just evolving basically yeah. because like there's okay, still a ton yeah there, there's still quite a bit of an engagement on there mm-hmm. and um personally I don't really use it anymore to like follow other artists because I do that on Twitter you know yeah. Instagram instead now but um I have seen like a lot of like you know up and coming artists on there you know and like really building and like growing their audience mm-hmm. so like I think it's just different now yeah. it, I don't know if it's necessarily like obsolete but it's just Mm -hmm. it's changed yeah Yeah. for sure Mm -hmm. yeah so pros of tumblr um it is okay it is the only one of all of these platforms where you can really customize how your page looks yeah it will look like a good portfolio if you get a good theme you can make it look however you want it to it's like it's like a basically a blog right Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of people do use this uh if you're an artist you might use this as like your starting portfolio which is what i did yeah, same can, here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just looks really good. Um <laughs> you have the the sharing 
abilities, you retweet other people. So like your posts can get a lot of traction and like spread around. Um, mm-hmm. You do have hashtags on um, on Tumblr as well. And I, th- I think people do use those as well. Yeah, I would say the hashtags on Tumblr are probably like much more relevant because like I have had a lot of times in the past where I specifically, you know, looked for certain hashtags Mm -hmm. to like find like either like fandoms or just like specific artwork kind of stuff. And it's been really useful in in that regard. So like, yeah, hashtags on Tumblr, really good. Yeah. Um, When you're posting on Tumblr, you can have, you can post videos, you can post uh your artwork you can post up to 10 images i believe and like have them at like really nice big beautiful sizes so people can really take in your artwork instead of like <laughs> um on like cropped on twitter like instagram on instagram exactly um so it's yeah. <laughs> it's really good for photos uh, which is why like tumblr was really big a couple of years back specifically for artists mm-hmm yeah, oh god, I, I love going on Tumblr. I mean, like, that that's basically what I use it for now. I just, like, follow, you know, like, mm-hmm. accounts that post a bunch of pretty photos. And, yeah. like, yeah, it's great for that, yeah. <laughs> and, um, it's good for, um, you can use it for, like, saving uh, other people's work as well, as in, like, um have kind of like a database which is like what I use Pinterest for now but like before Mm -hmm. I would uh I would have like a separate account and just like a retweet artwork which I really liked and have like a database Mm -hmm. of it that I could like look back for inspiration so it's good for that yeah yeah um it is really useful for that yeah then um so you can also you can kind of communicate um it's they have like replies but it's like you can't like reply each other but like when you retweet no not retweet what is it reblog <laughs> yeah reblog yeah, yeah. then it's sh- like the text shows up under the photo and you can kind of it becomes like a long chain um but it's not like the kind of bad thing about that is like when you when one person reblogs it with the reply and another person does, it becomes like two separate entities. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. like, so like mm-hmm. down the line, one post could have like a whole chain of replies and another could have a whole chain of replies <laughs> and they never interact with each other. Whereas <laughs> on Twitter or on Instagram, all like on your one post, all of the replies will be there. So you can see all of them in, in one thing and they're all interacting with each other. Yeah, Tumblr is definitely not the best platform for For interacting. I I feel like, yeah, I feel like it's really cumbersome and it's not intuitive whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So, like, Twitter definitely, you know, be... Mm -hmm. Um, sorry, you're breaking up. Yeah, I'm I'm also... I can hear you right now, yeah. Okay, all right, that's fine. Okay, Um, okay. Um, I know that, like, a lot of, like, people who are, like, uh working within the industry will look through tumblr like to find like portfolios and stuff so that it's it's still relevant for like um like finding jobs and stuff um it's since it's more appealing to look at than uh say twitter or instagram because again like you have like a nice beautiful website that people can scroll through Mm -hmm. okay um so okay those are pros and cons i think that's good uh facebook (laughs) I don't use Facebook. Okay. <laughs> um, so you can make a Facebook page if you want. Uh, I did that ages ago, but like I really did not like the kind of people that I was attracting. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's all of the normies, um, which is <laughs> fine. But like you don't have like a good community going on. Um, mm-hmm. Like if I post one thing on Twitter, it will be like all my friends and all of these like-minded people who are applying. But if I post on Facebook, it's like, um, why does her arm look like that? Um, oh, this, I this see. looks like this looks like this TV show, or like you know, it's, this is kind of annoying. Or like, I'm offended by this. God, oh man, people who post stuff like that, it's just kind of uh, really. So, yeah. <laughs> It's all you got old it. people on Facebook. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm I'm just not a fan of it. I know like some people are really active on it. Um, mm-hmm. Cause again, it's it is good for sharing. It's good for photos. It's good for replying. So it actually has like all of like the good things to it. But mm-hmm. I just don't like the community that's on it. Right. Right. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, like that matters, you know. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta enjoy it. (laughs) I think that's important. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then LinkedIn. (laughs) You have a LinkedIn. I don't have a LinkedIn. I do have a LinkedIn. Just Uh um, I'm not gonna say much about it. Um, okay. Except that I know someone who found work in animation because like an art director like stumbled like found them on LinkedIn and they got a job through that so it's something it's it could be something I don't know there's the potential there there's a potential you never know (laughs) (laughs) keep your options open you know Mm -hmm. if you really want to there you go yeah Uh, I think those are all the social medias I know like there are uh, because like all of these social media platforms are flawed and mm. we are even most of us are on twitter but like that's kind of it's not dying but like people are getting really annoyed by it so we are hoping for a, a social media savior to come in and save us um so far there hasn't been any i know like like vero popped up uh mm-hmm. very recently but that looks like a dud mastodon came up recently that was a dud and they're like ones that crop up now and then but i don't wait, know. wait are you talking about twitter or instagram twitter oh okay really twitter's dying oh, it's, it's not dying but like people are getting really fed up with it um okay. it's it's because of this dumb algorithm thing which we i guess we could talk about now oh okay <laughs> okay <laughs> so <laughs> this is like <laughs> i'm like I'm learning all this for the first time. I'm like, oh. so, so yeah, in, enlighten us. Okay. <laughs> so most of these social medias, um, when you are looking through your feed, originally they would have been uh, in reverse chronological order, which would be right. uh, you would see the most newest posts first, and then it would go backwards from there, okay. which makes sense, right? Right. Right. Yes. So, <laughs> um... All of these guys have now started implementing these algorithms. Um, and your feed is going to be arranged in such a way that it's going to show you... It's not going to be in chronological order anymore. It's going to try to... Using its system, it's going to put the post that's most relevant to you at the top. And then so on. Um, it's... Co- in theory, it sounds like a good idea, but for the most part, it's not really working, especially for creators, because their posts can get lost, because there's a very good chance that, like, people just don't see your post, because it's not relevant to the viewer. Um, yeah, I don't, I just can't really th- fathom how that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm trying to figure it out, but why? So, the actual thing is is that like all of these social media sites are using these algorithms so they can make more money which is really sad it's um of course they want people who are buying ads from them they want ads to show more frequently on your feed and if you have it in with this algorithm set up then these ads will show up more frequently on your feed so Mm -hmm. they will be getting more money so it's not for oh our benefit at all. It is def- it's for these people who are buying ads and it's for people who are benefiting from them, which is, you know, Twitter <sighs> and Instagram. And I guess, I don't know if Tumblr is doing this or not, but it's definitely Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, it's and it's always really about the annoying. money, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You tell them, girl. Yeah, that's disappointing. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's, it's really sad because, like, um, I've... With this algorithm set up, there are times, because I, I follow, like, a good, let's let's see, on Instagram, I follow, like, 500 people, mm-hmm. but I feel like I only see the same 10 people over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. there are some people who I feel like I haven't, I haven't seen them post in ages, but then if I go to their page, then I see that, oh, no, they've been posting this entire time, but I'm just not seeing it. Because, like, they're trying, they set it up, so, like, you'll see people who, um again are most relevant to you so like like you're your best friends or whatever but like yeah. no i want to see everyone yeah i i feel like i've been having the same experience as well where like on instagram i'll just see the same 10 people mm-hmm. it's like okay like i really like these posts but like i'm following more than 10 people so what's up mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly exactly so and then as a creator as someone who is making this art 
you know, like your post is, gets lost under all of these uh, other people's posts because it's not in order. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's just really, it's really unfair. It doesn't make any sense, but that's what we're stuck with right now. It's definitely frustrating. And like, I get it that businesses need revenue and, you know, in order to like operate smoothly, mm-hmm. but I don't think it should come at the expense of the majority of your users. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think exactly. the majority of users are buying ad space. And if you sort of, like, alienate those people, then, like, what are you really left with? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just It just doesn't seem like a smart move. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, okay, so, but there are ways of kind of getting around the algorithm, kind mm-hmm. of. There, there are certain tips and tricks. So okay. I don't know what they are for Twitter just yet, but I have learned about uh, Instagram. Um, so one of those things is that when you post something, mm-hmm. then you should be using hashtags. Okay. Right. Okay. But five is like the sweet spot because if you post like too many, then they, um, Instagram does this thing where they kind of soft block you. Um, so oh, like that's lovely. <laughs> people just don't, they will think the, the computers will think that you're like a spammer. Um, oh, and right, they will, right. you know, and then they'll like soft block you so people don't see you. So if you mm-hmm. post too many, that could happen. Um, if you post your your thing and then uh, you edit the post within the first 24 hours, there is a very s- much fewer people are going to see that post. I don't know why Wait, that what? is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know That's what so the logic weird. behind it is, but like if you um, do that, then like 80% fewer people will see your post. Oh my god, that's a huge amount. So don't edit within the first 24 hours if you can. Make sure you're posting exactly what you want yes. to post. Make sure you get rid of all those typos before you post. Yeah, I don't know, like drop a rough draft or something like that and like do some ed- edits. <laughs> yeah. Um, then, uh, so the other thing which I learned very recently, because I found this all in a blog post, and I will share that blog post on our on our. Uh, do we have show notes now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Uh, I'll share it on our Twitter eventually, once if I remember. Nice. But anyway, nice. so on this blog post, they also said that when you yeah. first post, okay, um, originally their Instagram is only going to show that post to ten percent of your fall fo- of your followers. Lovely. And if your post does well enough, then it will show it to the the other ninety percent. So <sighs> I know. <laughs> So if you notice, and I've noticed this with my posts as well, that some of them will get very few number of notes, but mm-hmm. others will get like an exceedingly high number. And I wonder, like, why mm-hmm. are these ones getting so low? It doesn't make any sense. But mm-hmm. if it doesn't do well within like the first, I think, an app, the first hour, then it just Instagram is like, oh, I guess like people just don't like it. We're not going to bother showing it to everyone else. So you got to. <laughs> make sure that like people really like it in that first hour what the fuck? i know i know it's so <gasps> messed up um so weird i know uh, so <sighs> the ways you can help that out is post during the right time so this applies to all of the social medias um generally i feel like the weekend is not a good time to post because people uh-huh. have lives and they're not <laughs> they're not going through their twitter or at least, I mean, I am, but other people aren't because, you know, they have friends. Um, so we, You have friends too, Anusha. I have you, but that's, that's all I have. But anyway, uh, then you should also take into account time zones as well. So like, right, right. like a majority of my followers personally live in the U.S. So back when I was living in, in Europe, I would try to um, make sure I post during a time that was good for the U.S., not necessarily for me. So I'd be posting later. Like, I'd always post at nighttime because that would be, like, afternoon for the for the states. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I found that um sort of, like, a good, like, a sweet spot to post during. And I'm, I'm using this uh, Pacific Standard Time. So usually between, I would say, like, 10 a.m. to, like, 3 p.m. Mm-hmm. Those hours, they, they seem to be pretty good because yeah. it's, like, People aren't commuting during that time, Mm -hmm. and also people are maybe more likely to be on their phones during, like, 
breaks during work or something yep. like that and you know yeah more likely to see your stuff mm-hmm. essentially i've read that around 12 o'clock is a really good time because people are on their oh, okay. work yeah and they're yeah. looking through their phone then and also after work like after five um Ooh, okay um I but never really like tried commuting that one, yeah. but like my sweet spot my ultimate sweet spot is Thursday night. I don't know what it is. It, it, I don't know what it is about Thursday night, okay. it's specifically Thursday. But like, I feel like everyone is online, and that is like, um, there's like a lot of traffic going on, so people are more likely to see my stuff. But like, I I know that um, if you have your Insta like on Twitter, you can see your stats, I think, and maybe there are some apps as well that show it. But for Instagram. If you have your account set up as a business account, you can see your um, some some statistics, and then so you'll be able to see like what day your profile is most active at. And if I look wow. at mine right now, I can see that Friday was really active for me, but Thursday was also really really active, and then Wednesday was a dud because I don't know why. Thursday is just a good day for you, Anusha. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe your day. Maybe your day might be a Saturday. Who knows? Yeah, but maybe. You should. Yeah. You guys should look into that. Like timing is really important. Um, mm-hmm. Then and try to avoid posting in the middle of the night. I think, and you're, that's a good place to start. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, also, like when you're not not for Instagram, but like when you're posting on Tumblr and. Uh, Twitter a lot of people will bump later on Mm -hmm. Um, like one time is acceptable two is kind of pushing it three is just don't (laughs) don't do three and bumping is (laughs) basically bumping is basically like replying or like reposting or retweeting that post at like a different time of day just so like it gets it shows up on the feed again so Mm -hmm. I will do this like if I post something at night time then I'll bump it during the daytime just so like people in a separate timeline will be able to see it and in case they miss it. Yeah, yeah. And we we want to make it clear. We're not telling you how to live your life. Oh, yeah. you, you can bump it as many times as you would like <laughs> oh, yeah, to. For sure. But like I, These I think are just we can't offer the advice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, exactly, exactly. We, but we can offer the advice that like you don't want to annoy people, mm-hmm. you know, real. you don't want to like turn people off by like bumping a post too much. And then they're like, this is annoying. And then like, they just don't want to look at it anymore. So mm-hmm. you don't really want that to happen. So right. like, when I just said one or two times, it's, it's pretty like acceptable, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Um, so, okay. I guess we could kind of talk about, um, wait, let me see how long have we been going for. I'm really worried this is going to be a two-parter, and I feel like it is. But oh, uh, I think we already decided from the out the offset that it's going to be a two-parter. Oh, okay, then well, that's fine. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I guess the last topic that we could discuss would be mm-hmm. um, how to grow a fan base. Grow a fan base. Okay. So I just want to put a disclaimer that followers are nothing. Well, not nothing, but like <laughs> it's, that shouldn't be like your uh your Main goal, motivation, you know. Yeah. Um, but it is. But we are gonna tell you what has worked for us, and like, or like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Vicky, do you want to start up? Like, how? Let's say let's let's go on our little time machine. Let's go on our way back, and then <laughs> we are gonna go um into. You have just bought your iPhone three, or I don't know what. You are you're a baby, and you have just downloaded Instagram. Okay. Uh huh. Uh-huh. What? Take me through your first year. <laughs> well, I never had the iPhone three. Let's start there. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm probably so, I'm using sorry. like a Galaxy S two or something like <laughs> that. But um, I, I would actually want to like move back even more and say that like I first got my like main start on Tumblr, but when it comes to posting artwork, that is like. We were talking earlier, like, yeah, I use, like, DeviantArt and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, okay, but, okay, wait. But, like, I would say that Tumblr was the main platform that really helped me to, like, start growing an audience. Mm-hmm. So, in that way, I am sort of, you know, indebted and very grateful toward Aww. Tumblr. And um, it was nice because, like, I felt like I was able to grow a community. And while I wasn't able to, like, interact with them, that much it was still nice to be able to like post something and like to receive some sort of feedback for it you know 
And then from Tumblr, I think I had posted on there for like a few years. I moved on to Twitter. And then Twitter was really interesting for me because for the first time, I really got a chance to interact with the people who were, you know, consuming my work. And that was just like really fascinating because I was on this new plane that I never experienced before. Because like prior to that, it was just like I post something and then people, you know, say whatever they want to say about it. And I look at it and I'm like, Hey, that's pretty cool. But like with, with Twitter, you like post something and people interact and then you can interact with them. And like that just like keeps feeding off of on itself. And you get to like know people, you know, who like interact with you regularly. You get to meet other people in the community. And like, that's really, really fun. So Twitter was very transformative in the sense that like, it just took me to the next level, mm -hmm. you know, where I was ready to like, start just like, operating on a more like person to person basis and receiving feedback in that way. And also just like making new friends in the art community. That was a really exciting time. And it still is because like, I still love meeting people through Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and from Twitter, I was actually able to get the opportunity to work with um, Overwatch. And I really don't think that if I had stayed on Tumblr, and I had opted not to use Twitter, that I would have had that same, right. you know, chance. So Twitter was really cool in that sense that not only were you able to interact with, you know, like your immediate fan base, but also like you mentioned earlier to interact with like actual companies and like art directors and to get their attention as well. And so like, that was a really, really cool experience. And, you know, I do owe a lot of that to Twitter. So that's really awesome. Um, as for Instagram, it's, uh, I, I don't really use it that often. So like, I, I don't have much to say about it other than like, it's, it's been really nice just as another receptacle for me to post artwork and to gain a following through there as mm -hmm. well. And, um, yeah, that's sort of like the bare bones of it. But I would say that Twitter is like, my baby, you know, I'm like very, <laughs> I'm very supportive of Twitter as a platform for artists, because I really think it's just a great opportunity for for anybody to grow. You know, there, right. there's just a lot of space there, a lot of room for you to reach out to other people. And in turn, sort of like, uh, just like level up, you know, develop yourself in that kind of way. Um, but but I do want to add a disclaimer that like, this is just my experience. And like, even if somebody were to do the exact same thing that I had did, it doesn't guarantee that they would have the same result. So, you know, just take it with a grain of salt. But yeah, that, that's sort of how I have built my following. That's sort of like the, the path, the timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I want to go a little bit more in depth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you weren't always the social media star that you are now you weren't always <laughs> internet famous at oh, one what? point you were a nobody vicky you were Hell just yeah. you were just some gal out there um so That's you started me. on your tumblr first right yeah yeah okay so how is it that you started off with like opening you started like your new account and everything mm -hmm. like how did you gain your following basically how did you grow on that part. Yeah, so what what I had mentioned earlier about like fandoms on Tumblr, and I think like I don't know if it had a payday back in like 2010 or like 2012 or anything like that, but getting involved in a fandom on Tumblr was probably like one of the integral things that had happened along my sort of like art journey because like when you are able to join a community, right? Like immediately you sort of have this um this network of like other people who share a common interest. So like you, you kind of already like have a audience in, in that sort of sense, right? Not necessarily that they're like immediate fans of yours or anything, but you have something to share with other people who recognize, you know, yeah. like what you're creating. And so I think that was really helpful being able to join fandoms and to meet people through fandoms and to create for fandoms essentially. Um, and of course, it all stems from a place of like genuine interest, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not like just walking into any random ass fandom being like, hey, you got any room in here? 
<laughs> no, no, it was very much like, ah, oh, I'm super into this one thing right now. You know, how can I share my love for this with other people as well, you mm-hmm. know, who have this common interest. And so like, I would, um, uh, I would give a lot of credit, you know, of, of my growth toward contributing to a fandom. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not only do you get to like contribute, but it's also fun in, in the meantime, it can be a lot of fun as well. And um, it you can just like make a lot of connections in that kind of way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um, mm-hmm. Like when I started off on Tumblr, well, okay, before that I was on DeviantArt, but like, no, mm-hmm. I, I don't talk about that. It's not like, it's not like <laughs> where um, when I moved on to Instagram and Twitter, like by like some of my followers from like the previous platform would like follow me on there. Like Tumblr mm-hmm. was kind of like I was starting fresh. So, right, okay. Um, I guess, yeah, like fandom was like this really big on Tumblr and so like joining yeah, a community yeah. is like one of the best things you can do because like not only are you um like you have like you share similar interests so like there's like a lot of like sharing going on like you can also like um you develop like a lot of really good friendships and like you kind yeah, of grow yeah. with each other um so what I I was like very into uh let's see so I was in a lot of fandoms, but I was, like, drawing a lot in, like, the Disney fandom. Like, I did, like, mm-hmm. a lot of art on, like, all of, like, the princesses, especially, like, um, like, Frozen when it came out. So that had gotten, like, a lot of traction. And, like, mm-hmm. as we discussed in our fan art episode, like, people really like fan art. And, like, when they see something <laughs> they like, they're more likely to share it. And so while we're not telling you to draw fan art and, like, it will get you more followers, right. it is, yeah. that kind of happens. So, like... Uh, I had drawn like some some Elsa fan art and like actually quite mm-hmm. a lot of it. I I drawn like a lot of princess fan art, and mm-hmm. that had gotten a lot of traction. And so that a lot of like my followers who were also Disney fans like followed me through that. And right, right, yeah, yeah. Um, and then what? you started like growing in growing an audience from that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like your audience could be a niche one, like if you have like a specific fandom or like a specific type of style that you have. Mm -hmm. then you kind of attract those people um Mm -hmm. which is nice it's kind of like your own little club yeah I think it's really interesting just like looking at both of our stories in a sense and just sort of like emphasizing the importance of finding a community Mm -hmm. really you know it's it's so huge to be able to connect with other people and this applies not only I mean like not to get fake deep or anything but like this applies to life in general like nobody gets anywhere alone right and Mm -hmm. um when it comes to art, if, if you can find other people who can, you know, like mutually support you in that kind of way and just sort of like enjoy the process and enjoy the journey, like that's, that's huge, you know, mm-hmm. that's sort of what it's all about, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And um, before we finish up, I just want to like make one more point. So like, yeah, yeah, while we've been talking a lot about social media, there are some of you out there who have never even posted their work online before. And mm-hmm. it is a really it can be a really scary first step and I totally understand that because we were all there at one point and yeah, so yeah. my start was in uh on DeviantArt because I was I was mm-hmm. always too afraid to like post my stuff on on Neopets for like <laughs> but like um finding that community um mm-hmm. kind of gave me the courage to do that um if you find because like if finding other like friendly people with like similar interests you kind of like are like oh okay I also want to contribute and like you kind of get the courage to like post something and I applaud you guys if like you do like after listening to this like you decide like you want to take that first step and I know Mm, it's scary mm -hmm. but like sharing your work online is like one of the best things that has ever happened to me like Mm -hmm. it is the reason I got better it's like a way to when you're sharing your work online, you it's you get critique from it um, because like other people are seeing it that like you might normally not get like on your own. You have like keep you get better because you're drawing constantly and posting it online and like um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think that was beautifully said. You know, and um, I I do think that in general, the um, positives outweigh the negatives when it, when it comes to posting and sharing their work online, mm-hmm. you know, sort of like, sure, the first step is always scary. But once you, you know, just, just do the thing, right? Just mm-hmm. 
<laughs> it's always about just like just do the thing and just go from there. Yeah. Right? I think uh, a lot of times people would rather look back and be like, hey, you know, I'm really glad I did that. You know, whether or not it went successfully doesn't really matter. It's like, hey, I'm glad I did that mm-hmm. rather than feeling like, oh, I wish I had done that. Yeah. You know, so if, if you feel like it's something that you really want to do, then like I think both Anusha and I were just like, yeah, you know, we encourage you to mm-hmm. to take that step. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I also want to say that, like, I I get, like, the fear of, like, posting something online and, like, people, especially when you're first starting out and, like, you are still new to this. So, like, you're you're still learning. So, like, you might be afraid that, like, people are going to be mean, you know, like, they might, mm-hmm. like, give, like, some bad critique or, like, just, just be a bully. And I know, like, sometimes these things can happen, but I really hope that it doesn't deter you from like like still posting after that like you shouldn't take it too hard like there there are mean people out there but you shouldn't let them get to you because there are a lot of like nice people out there as well absolutely i do think that like the mean people tend to be like few and far between but like you know just focus on like the people who are there to you know like help you out and to to see you through this journey you know and just kind of like just focus on that because that's the stuff that's important really yeah that's really good no need yeah there's no need to focus on like needless negativity for just not it's not helpful (laughs) Mm -hmm. okay so i think that's it right or at least for now we have like a bunch of other points on like our our google doc but we will get to that next time which would be we sure will in (laughs) a month two four yes Oh, there you go. You got it. <laughs> it's the year of the Fortnite. We're bringing it back. You know, we did say that, and we're going to make it happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're, we're already making it happen, I would say. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Art Corner. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Art Corner Pod or send us any questions or comments at theartcornerpodcast at gmail.com. You can find all of our episodes on workbook.com slash artcorner. Our theme music was made by the amazing Louis Zong and you can follow him at Everyday Louis. Thank you to our social media manager, Megan Stump. You can follow her on Instagram at mtstump. You can also follow Anusha on Twitter at Foxville underscore art and follow Vicky at Vicky Sai. Please review and subscribe to our podcast. We'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks again and see you next time.